Well, welcome to all of you. Uh, we're going to take uh, two or three minutes here to kind of get acquainted and, and get started together. And uh, um, my name, if you don't know, is Dwayne Little. And to give you just a little bit, I was a professor of history here from 1973 until last year. So this is my first year of retirement. And uh, this Point, Point Loma uh, purchased this, this location in 1973. So there have been other institutions before us. And the first few years, we were very busy just trying to get settled kind of here. By about 1976 or 77, people were asking me about all of these unusual looking buildings. And so I made an appointment. I asked and talked with Iverson Harris, uh, who's the very first theosophist that I came to know went to his house in Pacific Beach. He and his wife, they hosted me, and met with them three or four times. And he, they pulled out, usually on Sunday afternoon, and they pulled out all the scrapbooks, and they showed me all those kind of things. And then, of course, then he said, of course, you know my friend Emmett Small. And I said, no. <laughs> so he was my key then to get, to get to know Emmett and Carmen Small. And they were among my dearest of friends, you know, for 30 plus years, until both of them passed away. It was my pleasure to speak at both of their memorial services, for instance, and and we were that that close. And now Ken kind of carries on that that tradition, and so if Ken asked me to do something regarding theosophy, he already knows the answer is yes. Um, So I began, I am not a, a, a... uh, uh, an expert in theosophy. That, that's not my, my purpose. Uh, really, it is trying to understand more uh, uh, how the Theosophical Society impacted this geographic place. And so it's been mostly photographs and interrelationships and things like that. But if you start want to talk to me about the, the inner meanings of theosophy, you'll lose me in a hurry, Okay. That, that's not my, my area of expertise. Um, let's see. Today, uh, we will be looking at about nine or ten different locations that are still here. Uh, this is a Christian university. Uh, and, and I'm happy to report that what could have been some differences of opinion actually has turned into one of those unique times in history when people who are, think differently coexist, and not only coexist, but flower, I think, in that relationship. And so uh, we have attempted to be respectful of the, the theosophical heritage here it, to the greatest extent we possibly could, given what we were doing. And, and, and the theosophists have helped me to get all of the photographs and to understand and answer questions and research at the the Theosophical Library in in Pasadena. And so it is is always. So today you're simply another of those occasions where where we all come together, you know, to try to understand and to appreciate what the past was like. It was my pleasure uh, to travel. I had a sabbatical in 1984. And uh, I had put together a slide presentation, and it was my pleasure to go with Emmett. I was going to be in Europe, and so he went to Europe. And so I, he and I gave the slideshow in the Netherlands in 1984. I don't know if any of you were there. It was near Arnhem at a conference center near Arnhem. Well, okay, well, then you'll enjoy tomorrow. <laughs> And then after that, uh, uh, we went to Berlin and, and did the same thing for the group in Berlin. And then I did a long traipse around and came back to Paris and did the same thing at, at Paris. So it was an, an outreach to, to the European theosophists to try to share you know, what, what this place is, is, is really like in history. Um, normally, I, I prefer to show the, the PowerPoint presentation that you're going to see tomorrow at 10 before you take this tour because then you can kind of appreciate more of what you're seeing. So, but because of scheduling, which I understand, we are going to do it in reverse order. But just know that, that the context of what you're going to see 
is going to be placed photographically into context tomorrow. And you will have an opportunity to ask questions, I assume, tomorrow for the things that you may not get today. All right? Any questions thus far before, and then we'll kind of start going uh, about? Yes, sir. Is that PowerPoint made available later for those of us that won't be able to be here tomorrow? You know, I've never thought of I, I suspect that could be done. I, I just haven't done it before, but uh, well, let, Ken, let, let, let Ken and I talk about that, and we'll see what, what Something might be possible. possible yeah. Or maybe contact you know between the two of us directly and maybe then I could get it to you directly or something like that. We'll, we'll try our best to work something out because I want you to see it. Well, let's see. Um, all of you know the roots of theosophy uh, far better than me. Uh, and But here in, in uh, 1897, Catherine Tingley had purchased this property. At the height, uh, it was about 500 acres. And in about the 1920s, there was a maximum of about 500 people that were here. Now, the college right now has about 93 acres. And so a lot of the communities that you see on, on, the, on the periphery of this campus, there's a park on that side and, and residential communities around us. But a lot of that was originally theosophical uh, land. And you'll see photographs of all that tomorrow, most of you. And... Uh, uh, so in, in, uh, uh, that, in the late 1890s, which you'll see the, 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 what this looked like then, they, they built a very large uh, academy building, which renovated a hotel that was over here on this property, and a temple of peace that was over there. And you'll get to see all of that. And then this is a companion piece. Uh, this, this is... When Catherine Tingley was in New York, she, she became very close friends with Elizabeth Spaulding. And, well, the person who's going to become Spaulding. Uh, and and they, they decided to get married. And so Elizabeth Spaulding, they came here. And this was a house that Albert G. Spaulding, the baseball magnate, built for he and his wife, uh, a, a honeymoon cottage. A, a, a group home number one, uh, and and uh, it was built. And you will see about six or seven photographs of this particular building from the time it was starting to be built until it, it comes into the way it is presently. It's not exactly the same as it was then, uh, but uh, you, we can point out those differences uh, tomorrow. So, so this in, is not is in actually it was built in about three months. Because because my negatives were all dated, and and so from beginning to here in about three months, and this is the, the home of Albert G. Spaulding, so uh, who not only was in baseball but he ran for U.S. senator in 1912 uh, uh, as an independent conservative businessman, uh, and was very prominent in the San Diego area. Uh, including developing a park along the ocean that cost him about $2 million. That was a housing development that trying to take advantage of when there was the international uh, uh, exposition here in 1915 and 16. He was on the, the first one of the first commissioners here on the road commission and so forth with, with other major leaders. I mean, this society was the intellectual and artistic center of San Diego in 1900. And, and many of our leading institutions from the historical society to art guilds, museums, and so forth actually have theosophists among the very first of those in the city that laid the foundations for what is now here. So its impact went well beyond this, this particular place. There was an ISIS theater downtown that, that also uh, you'll see a, a photo of where the society had lectures and musical things and so forth there also. So it's, it's, uh, it, it is obviously, I, I often think, and then I'll try to stop talking, you know, but uh, you know, the Theosophical Society was really, the Depression hit this place really badly in the 1930s. And so it really had 30, 35 years, I would say, of, of maximum. And Catherine Tingley, you know, died in the late 20s. And so... It, 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 was, it had only about 30 to 35 years of maximum time for growth and development and so forth. And actually, 
Point Loma College has been here now almost 40 years. And so we've actually been here longer than they were, and sometimes I wonder, you know, at, at the accomplishments of the society in that relatively brief period of time and the impact they had not just here but in the city and, and nationally and internationally. So it, it was, it's, it's a marvelous story, and, and uh, I hope that you come to appreciate it as much as obviously we do. Okay? All right. Well, I think that it's a fairly large uh, 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 inside. I think we can kind of traipse through, and, and I'll try to show you at least a few things about, about it. All right? So, so is there anything to explain? Because inside we're going to get separated a lot. Well, uh, uh, I will kind of go with you. You look, and I'll kind of walk here and there. Or maybe I can tell you in advance. Uh, no, I can show you better. Uh, so why don't you just come on in, and I'll do my best. You peek around the edges, and, and we'll, we'll try to make it together, okay? So come on in. <clears throat> this is uh, the administration building for, for Point Loma Nazarene uh, uh, University. Uh, so our, our provost and president and vice presidents and so forth are in this particular building. This is the rotunda kind of area you know, within it. It is pretty close to, to the way it was originally, uh, except that, that this area that you see in the, in the brown fabric, that was open. And also behind the desk that you passed as you were coming in, there's a little closet area there now. That was open. And so actually on, in, inside here, you could move around almost seeing almost everything like this. And... and uh, 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 so there, and there were like strings and so forth sometimes, you know, that they would kind of put and then and pull across if they wanted like a little more privacy or whatever. There was a stairway that went down behind this wall to the lower level where the kitchen was. They were the only ones who did not eat in common with everyone else. Everyone else ate together in the refectory uh, on, on the campus. The Spaldings uh, had, had their own food service uh, here. <clears throat> um, you, you may notice the interesting carvings, which are by Reginald Machel, who is an artist on, on, on campus. Uh, he decorated many buildings, uh, uh, probably best known for the doors to the Temple of Peace, which are still with the San Diego Historical Society today. And an archivist from uh, UCLA, University of California at Los Angeles, was here several years ago. And he, he was looking at, at the carvings in particular, and there are a few things I think I remember from, from what he had to say. But you'll notice, you know, almost all of these have, you know, lotus flowers and so forth, you know, coming. Essentially, the message is, you know, from the material world, you know, aesthetically to the spiritual world, if I understand that correctly, and from ancient religions and so forth. Um, on that side... You can see there's like this, this face on this side, and there's a different one on, on the other. And, and I don't know esoterically what, what the meanings of those were, but he, he thought he had some explanation for that. I always found this one over here more understandable and interesting. If you see the sun, you know, is in the middle. And if you follow with your eyes over to the right, you will, there are some little lines. You can see that this child is holding a prism in his hand. And then these little lines that are coming down, it's hard to see because our light in here is not so good. But, you know, it was refracting the light over, over uh, onto this paper. And then on this side, the, the, the light is coming through a magnifying glass onto a leaf that's being held and it's burning a hole in a leaf. Well, you know, children was, children was, were, you know, the major, the major focus for the Theosophical Society in many ways because they were really attempting to bring a new generation with a different approach to life, values, and so forth. And so, you know, this, this is, I think, part of, of that particular story. Also, Elizabeth Spaulding herself was the primary music teacher here. And so if you look whenever you, you... I'll give you a chance to go walk around in a moment. When you look out here, you will see that there are a lot of musical instruments over those doors. Well, that is particularly relating to Elizabeth Spaulding and her emphasis kind of on music. Uh, one thing that, that I found really interesting is, is if you look at the sun on this side, 
in the middle of the, of the it's not egg and dart, but whatever the name of that is at the top, you can see that it is a, a convex in, in, in shape. But if you look from that side, and you'll get a chance when you go by, you will see that the same sun is there, but it's concave in, 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 in the way that it's put together. So this, uh, this had very ornate furniture, which you'll see tomorrow. Uh, 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 it had statues on the outside of these two, two, two walls. It was a, a very formal kind of circumstance. This, this was darker in color. Uh, this has been painted. Uh, it is mostly tin. The windows up there are amethyst, and you'll notice in almost all the buildings, uh, 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 amethyst is a major uh, uh, color. All of this is original over these windows and so forth. Uh, in 19, when we purchased this in 83, the sphere that you see on top wasn't there. And so after uh, spending time with Iverson Harris and, and, and Emmett and so forth, I became, hey, look, you know, this building is kind of pancake. It, it, it really needs this, this thing put back. And uh, so I was just a really, I, I, some, at the end of talks then, sometimes I would say, if any of you, you know, there are a few things I'd like to do, some of which have done, some not. But you know, one thing, I'd love to see that sphere put back. If any of you have any money, you know, or if you have expertise, you know, it'd be fun to try to put that thing back. Well, it just so happened that at one of these things, Richard Robb was in attendance. Now, Richard's going to be here tomorrow, and I haven't got to see him for several years. He's kind of been out there somewhere. Because we had after, we did this in, I think it's 1980 or 81. And he put all the ideas together. I held his hand and helped him move stuff <laughs> for a summer. And then... We got a crane out and, and put the sphere back on as you see it up, up, up there presently. And it's lasted for, you know, right at 30, 35 years or something with, without any kind of hardly of attention. But it needed to be to fix. And I wanted, I tried to get in touch with him to, to be an advisor for us in, in, in doing it. Some of these, I think most of these also, the glass, we had, we had to come from Germany to, 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 to match it up. We had originals and so forth. And, uh, and then this is, you, you don't see it so much, but these are also, well, you see that there was too much light in here coming from the south, so they put these little shades over these. But these are, are, are some are originals and some are replacements, you know, around the side. And then the amethyst glass and, and then that color. Um, I think now, you've listened to me quite a while, I think it would be good for us just to scatter a little bit no, this actually came from, from the Pasadena campus, oh, okay. whose history I don't know. <laughs> but there was an attempt at some part of kind of merging those two traditions of a certain sense so that people that had been there for 75 years, when they came here, they saw something familiar. Oh, and so, so that's really, I think, why that's there. This is absolutely original. Yeah, this is original. Oh, okay. And this is all from the same artist? Oh, yes, and, and there are a number of other buildings that, that Machel... You will see a couple of other things before we're finished today that he did. But uh, in the photos tomorrow, you will see a lot of his work every, you know, in many buildings. Well, it's interesting that when the fellow from UCLA came, he, he gave me the, the, the time sequence of, of when each of these were done. And because he could notice the development, like you're asking for, and they're not they're not all done at at at, 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 the, at the same point. I don't know some some of the arguments. So I'm sure I'm sure he evolved his ideas, you know, as he practiced, and and was given I think a lot of freedom to to, to do what he what he wanted to do. One thing I I forgot to say, and I don't know for those of you who are here, but also. I was really confused for a long time about a photograph that I had and that you know shows which you'll see tomorrow which shows those those doors and I was looking at it and trying to make sense of it and and, and there were several things that in, that jarred my senses that doesn't seem right and then after a while I discovered that in fact you know that door was originally mirrored by a door that's on behind here in, in this, uh, when, 
when we were buying this property, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the attorney that was uh, doing the, the transaction was a good friend of our president, and he was killed in, a, in a, an airplane crash. Okay. His name was Miras, Wes Miras. So this is Miras and his wife, and so the name of this given to this building it, it was the Miras Hall oh, okay. in honor in yeah. honor of, 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 of his contribution to to getting possession of, of this land. Okay, thank you. Sure. Are you associated as well to the San Diego Historical Society? Or? I, I I read an extensive interview with uh, with, with Ives and Harris in one of the magazines, yeah. going back to '74, I believe. Yeah, actually, in fact, that it was came very up. Good one. That, that, was a that very came good up one. because Iverson. In fact, I was at an Ocean Beach meeting. It's a little community yeah. down here. Yeah. That, that they did a, an interview with a, uh, I forget his name. It's a theosophist who lives in Ramona. Okay. And and they were talking about whether or not there was a cemetery down by the the ocean. Okay. And and Iverson wrote in there that there was. And. That fellow from up there said there was. Is that, is that Gordon Plummer? Or? No, I, I knew Gordon. Gordon's passed away. This yeah. guy's still alive. Yeah. Okay. And and but we have never been able to find any record or any physical evidence or anything of, of the cemetery. But but both of those primary persons who were here, Emmett didn't know. I checked with everybody in Pasadena. They don't know anything about it. But so it's an interesting. You know, as a historian, it's interesting to those first person. Kind of interviews as to as to what different people. I suspect there really was at, at yeah. one time. But there must have it been, may you know. it may be it may be on the Navy land, yeah. which is was part of the original Theosophical land. Yeah. Ken asked me to suggest. Uh, I will I'll point out to both today and tomorrow, probably, but I was director of planning uh, here in mostly the 1990s, as, as well as part-time in history, and the architect and I, we attempted to merge theosophical architecture. We had to kind of go back past the 1950s and 60s, which is just a blah, terrible architecture, and then, but when we spent about $60 million on new buildings that you'll see shortly, and so it's always a good principle in a, in a campus to, to try to have one sense of place. And so we, we tried to pick up a number of elements from the theosophical architecture. And one of the most dominant ones, as you'll see right there and other places, is, is the flattened arch. And, and also round columns. You'll see very few square elements here. I'm looking at this modernistic square thing. <laughs> they did not get my permission to do that. <laughs> Take it away. Yes. And 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 you'll notice too that many of our buildings are rounded. Uh, they they have many skylights because of the inside outside kind of kind of emphasis. Um, and most of them are light colored. You know where where Catherine Tingley you talked about a white city on a hill, etc. Well, almost all of our buildings are light in color. Most of them with a darker edge to them. You'll notice on on, on, on the newer ones, and also you know, this place was known for its beauty in terms of, uh, of plant life and so forth. And so, you, you, as you go about, I hope you'll notice, you know, that uh, in the in the 35 years that that Point Loma has been here, it, it it didn't look so hot. It didn't look like this when we came here, and and so there's been a, a significant restoration. And so, you know, with the beautiful ocean, you know, the lovely skies, you know, and with greenery and flowers and, and, and exotic plants that came from theosophists all over the world, because this was one of two areas in, in Southern California where most vegetation, new thing, almost everything in Southern California came from somewhere else. And, 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 and the theosophists through here, because they had 500 acres, there was a lot of experimentation and so forth. Uh, in fact, if you if you read the book on this community, about half of that book is the agricultural experiments and so forth that are here. And so, you know, we've tried to keep that that range of, of vegetation and keep as much as we could for as long as we could, and and improve on it whenever it was possible. So, you know, these elements still kind of 
carry on that original mission, that original idea, you know, that that uh, that they had back at the turn of the century. Okay. okay. We're going we're going to what was called North House, uh, and uh, I'm, since I've got you here, I might as well introduce it from here. Um, it is the northernmost point of the campus right now. Uh, it used to go on over to a John Street, and and um, uh, it had this house had many different uses over the years. Um, I have pictures of Catherine Tingley living in that in that building. She, uh, she lived upstairs. I have pictures of her. I think looking out three of the different windows, yeah. and and uh, but but. She primarily, I think, initially lived in the academy. Then she lived, I think, in, in North House for a while. And then when they built the International Headquarters building, that became her, her, her primary residence for the rest of her life. So, so she, her presence was in, in two, or two or three of these places. And, and the North House still has some of the original elements, and it's, it's classic beauty I think you'll appreciate as well. Uh, it's not as big a thing to see as here. But we'll invite you in and, and have a look. Was uh, North House where uh, Daniel DeLanga lived? Uh, no. That was uh, next to it, the building next to it, right? No, actually, he's the, the musician, right? Yes, right. Um, originally, when I came here, uh, about where that green oh, thing is, right. there was a building right in there that, that what, it didn't have any real architectural merit and so forth, but that was the the home of, of the music director, Delanga, that, that was here. Uh, we offered that to the society, actually, and, and, and uh, if they could move it somewhere and so forth. Uh, they, they said they hadn't a, really a use for it. And, and so it's just, there are, are two or three elements that were here from the Theosophical Society originally. One of them was Juvenile Hall, which is just a square building, kind of, and, and that was kind of in the, absolutely the wrong place. And, and so each time we talk with the society and the society, I was, I was really impressed. I mean, you know, I, I constantly am, but, you know, they said, look, Catherine Tingley never believed that the past should be venerated in, you know, in, in place of the present. And whatever adjustments need to be made to changing circumstances, we think that would be very consistent with the way she would look at it. And, and so, you know, it is not going to be our place to try to stand in. If the function of the university, you know, requires this kind of thing, you know, then we will do our best to cooperate. And on the other hand, we said we will go to as far as we possibly can to save as much as we can, you know. And and I think you know that's been a, a really really good arrangement. This, this building was built in, in about 1904, 1905. I don't even know if anyone knows the precise time, but you can see it on the, in the, when the photographs, when it kind of shows up. If you can notice that you know, the land falls away, there's like a bluff here on the other side of us, and down below here are, are, are student dormitories, uh, and in, in, there was a road even in theosophical days that used to go down into that canyon. And all that land was owned by the Theosophists all the way to, to the ocean. Now there is a 50-acre a park to, to the west of us. It's kind of an agreement between the city and us when we bought the property. And, and so uh, uh, all, everything here kind of follows the contours of, of the land. But this was out here. This building was also during the Theosophical period, but you can see it's of an entirely different style. And we just use it for business kind of, kind of things as well. This building, uh, North House, I still tend to call it, it's our alumni house. I have different pictures of this, and I have one where there are none of these, we, in the Midwest we call them dormers, these little openings in the roof. Mm -hmm. And then I've got one where there are two of them, <laughs> and then I've got another one where there are four of them. <laughs> And, and I have pictures of Catherine Tingley standing out on, on, the, on that ledge out there overlooking, you know, in, into this particular area, you know, back, back in those days. I have some pictures of her at desk, which I think were upstairs, but I, I can't, I haven't been able to verify it for sure because that becomes a real problem. 
because the theosophists were always moving things around all the time, and and so, you know, so so she so so you, now you see it, now you don't, you know, and depending on what your perspective is or where it used to be and where it is now is a real real challenge for for someone trying to make sense of, of what's still here. You can see the the amethyst uh, in the door, uh, in the glass there, also in those uh, 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 ovals. Those ovals were actually covered up, and we discovered that those those were in there. Uh, we redid the the roof. It almost it, it always leaked before we redid it, and I think it's because it had been redone so often. You see this little house over to your left. There were originally two of them. Uh, uh, and, and it was actually located over here where this kind of gate portico is. The two were side by side over here. Again, for functional reasons and so forth, we could only keep one of them, and so it was moved over here. It is, in fact, a, a guest house. It has a bed. It has a kitchen. It has it, it's a restroom and everything in there. You know, it folds up, all that kind of stuff. It has a skylight in it. The president controls who goes in there. Yeah. And, and and so it, it's it's really really classy. So they they made that into a really nice nice arrangement. Um, when you go inside, uh, mostly we're going to be in a, in just the main kind of living air, room area. Uh, that's what you'll see in the photos tomorrow. But I would call your attention particularly after we walk in to a fireplace that that's on your left, which you will see in the originals. And you will see that in the originals there was a picture of HPB up 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 above, the, the same picture I will be showing of HPB actually, and also the stairwell that that you see there that is a, a circular kind of in, in in nature, that's also and the carvings I, I don't know for sure if Reginald Mitchell did I assume he did it looks like his work, and then you'll see on the inside still a lot of the same kind of ornate uh, uh, elements that you've you've seen in, in the prior building. So uh, we, we will, oh, and if you'd like to know, there are now four apartments upstairs. And so if you are the father or mother of a, an alumni and so forth, you can call here, make arrangements, and stay here uh, for, for free. I think they do accept donations, but it, it's a, a perk that, 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 that people related to the university have uh, through the Alumni Association. So. So we probably won't go up there. It's too 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 uh, compressed for for a group, and I'm, I'm not sure we could get there anyway. But there's they're nice bedrooms and really nice situation upstairs. If you if you notice, some of you I see looking at the photographs going up the the way there. Uh, those are original buildings on our campus in Pasadena before we came here. And uh, so many of the older alumni remember those, and some of those are very historic as well. So they were in Pasadena. We, we began in 1902. So we were about 75 years in Pasadena, and now we've been uh, almost 40 years here. Yeah. From there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's ironic. Oh yeah, that that is a very interesting kind of thing in, in the sense that that the Theosophical Society began here in 1897 and moved and and when they left ultimately they arrived in Pasadena. Our college started in actually LA and then moved to Pasadena and and then moved from Pasadena here. So we almost exchanged Yes. Campuses, you know, and having begun at about almost the same time, 1902 and 1897, yeah. it's just a curious kind of intermingling of, 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 of histories like that. And so that you'll see there the, the uh, uh, fireplace, and it's where the mirror is, it's where you'll see HPB's uh, uh, picture tomorrow. And this is Machel's work, I'm pretty sure. It, you will see it tomorrow. It's really dark like mahogany in, 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 in the original going up. And then you can see, you know, the wooden things on, on the stairs itself. In the back, you can see some of that tin work as well. Again, flattened arches. Pictures I have of this, it, it, it have these strings, again, kind of Victorian kind of things, where sometimes they would pull them aside and sometimes here. And so this room was always kind of open like this, but they did make kind of temporary separations from one section to another.
This house also, <clears throat> uh, the porch used to go all the way around it, and it, it has been infilled some on, on that back side. And actually, the front of the house was not where you came in, but the front of the house was actually over on that side. And when, you know where I met most of you, that, 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 that road that comes down that way, originally it came all the way over here to this house, in front of that side and then came up on the other side of, of the Spalding house. And so the entrance, the front, in fact, there were still steps out there, wooden steps until 20, 20 years ago that, that were the original here. And so this house has been infilled a little bit on, on, on the back side, just like the uh, Spalding house was, was as well. Those pictures on the wall the, the, I mentioned those are from our Pasadena campus. This is where all the alumni work is done to uh, keep keep good in touch with, with with all the graduates over all, all the years. And, um, it, they do a, they do an exceptionally good job. Pretty nice, huh? Um, some of these buildings as well, in Victorian periods, they often had like a very ornate public spaces, but fairly common living spaces. You'll see that in the International Headquarters building in particular. And so this is more the public space, you know, upstairs is more the private place. Where, where actually in the pictures I have, if it's the right one, you can actually see rafters and so forth, you know, in, in, in the area up, upstairs. So... I think, you know, I think that's probably how, how it was used. And this was a library. Uh, it was a guest home. It, 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 uh, according to Emmett and others I've talked to, seven or eight different kinds of activities have been centered in, 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 this, in, in this particular building. Well, if you're ready, we'll head back the other way. There are, certain, there are certain of you who want to go into the bottom of this. I don't think most of you do unless you, I don't think there's anything in there. But for some reason, there were three or, three or four of you who really wanted to, to go in. And of course, anyone who wants to may, but it's, it's been just kind of cleaned out. It was business for accounting and all that kind of thing was done. And I think now it's mostly conferences. But there were, there were some people who wanted to, to see that in particular, so we did get that door open. Okay. <clears throat> Well, this was the during the time from 1929 to 1942, when this was the headquarters building for the Theosophical Society at that time with Dr. De Pruker there. Mm -hmm. This was also the esoteric office underneath uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. So this is where uh, what we're reading today, a lot of people are reading uh, booklets prepared during that time. The series of 12 esoteric teachings were prepared here. The lectures well, for those. Well, more of you may want to go then. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Now everyone wants. Well, well Alan maybe, Harrison, now, maybe, maybe a couple of other things, yeah. and then I'll give you a few minutes. This is a building we couldn't get into because that's where all of the student records are kept and transcripts and so forth. So someone from that building has to be there, I guess, whenever it's open. But this was a building built by Albert G. Spalding for his nephew, and who lived there, and. Um, it was in, when we got it, it was in really pretty terrible shape. So one of the things I did was to get it back in shape. Mm -hmm. And I can't get you in there, but you can see there's some fairly large windows there. Mm -hmm. And so feel free, to the extent that you would like, to go in and, and peek, peek in the windows. Uh, you can be a peeper through, through there <laughs> and, and, and see it as, as much as possible because it's a lovely, lovely building uh, uh, now that we've got it fixed up correctly. Okay. Actually, and, and anyone who would like to come in here, you, you yeah. may. My parents free lived here. in this building in 1948, wow. huh? 51. Emmett and Carmen lived here. They lived everywhere at some point no, or the other. It seems that. like. 47, 48, 49. Mr. Spalding. This, this is this is a very good question. Uh, um, he, he asked whether or not this was a private property, and actually, uh, anyone who Catherine Tingley ran everything. I mean, incredibly, 
I mean, powerful. I mean, and she didn't have, all, she didn't go to college. She didn't have all of those things. I mean, she she had you know charisma, the, the native kind of, and and so if you wanted to come here, or bring your children here or something else, it was all negotiated and agreed by Catherine Tingling. And the terms that different people came here were different, depending on their sort. Like there were a lot of um, uh, children that she brought in the early days from Cuba, uh, and and many of those never paid a dime. Right. I mean, they were totally supported you know, by Catherine Tingley. Others had fairly wealthy families there and so forth, and so they contributed to 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 what was here. And so within, as I understand it, at least within the community. You know, some of the properties, you know, were the public properties were all uh, uh, society controlled. But there were, if you in the pictures tomorrow, you will see probably 30, 40 houses ranging down the hillside and so forth. Well, a lot of those houses I'm given, you know, were really under quasi private ownership. And, and some people, when they came, uh, uh, they. I guess we would call it like life contracts or something. They would give money and so forth to the society in exchange for living here and lifetime, and they would be expected to do duties and so forth, you know, and work with, within it. And this was not a, a intended to be a, a self-supporting. Uh, a it was not commutarian in, in, in that sense, that they were trying to become truly self-sufficient. They never, they never were. Uh, they always purchased quite a bit of things from the city, uh, they always paid their bills, and the people in the city really liked the society because it brought culture and the architecture. I mean, for me, it's always the power of architecture. I mean, one of the reasons you were probably here in part is the architecture that is so interesting. And so, you know, they, they brought all those pieces together, and Catherine Tingley was at the center. So I think it, it just depends on the individual what kind of arrangements were made. All right. Uh, I was I told some of them there there should be some more beautiful steps there that were there originally, but uh, maybe we'll get to that one of these days. Now the next building we're going to go to is is it's a public safety building uh, uh, right now. Until the last uh, five years or so, in Theosophical times, Cal Western and USIU times, and us, it was a health related facility. Uh, so that if you got sick or something, you went there at the infirmary and, and someone was there to try to try to help you. Now, in the last five to ten years, we have a whole department of nursing and all that kind of stuff, and other those functions went somewhere else. So it's now where our security staff is, but it is it is an original house. It is it is it was called Casa Rosa. That is Rose House, and I'll show you photos tomorrow of, of all of these rose bushes out out front. And it's also really unusual, and it, and it is in a style that I understand is called twig architecture, which I think is more in the Appalachians or in the in the, in the mountains in, in in northern New York. And of course, KT was was from that area, and it's a different style than than. than any, I mean, when we talk about being eclectic theosophist or whatever, you know, well, they ask me, what's the architecture here? You know, well, it's an eclectic style. It borrows from a lot of different places. And, and Casa Rosa is a very different but very, very interesting place. And if you'll notice, it was also in the middle of health movement and the turn of the century where uh, people didn't understand how they got sick. So a lot of them were, were looking for, they, and Catherine Tingley and others, I think, and I think it's consistent with the theosophical ideas, you know, to try to live healthy, a lot of fresh air, sunshine, uh, you know, this, this maximizing in, in and out kind of thing, a lot of air flow, you know, don't, don't let things get sedentary and so forth because you might get sick. If you, know, if you stay on the move and you get, you get all these good things, well, then you're probably going to, to live better. So I think this house was built partly around those principles. And I understand that, that, that this twig architecture is mostly, in, I guess it's the Arirondacks, and, and, you know, which would be maybe within 50 to 100 miles of where Catherine Tingley came from. So you, it, you can just kind of find your own way through that building if you'd like. You know, it's, it's nothing particular other than this, I think I'd probably have to say, so you can kind of follow me over in that direction. Just, just one aside on that is the, the resident doctor at Point Loma was Dr. Lauren F. Wood. And Dr. Wood was a, a homeopath and actually made all his own remedies. 
Uh, yeah, it's very unusual. And there were several resident physicians, but he was at that time, in Catherine Tingley's time, the, the main primary person. Yeah. And actually, when we're almost there, we're, we'll, I'll lead you through the parking lot that's uh, on the side of it, and right down on the edge of the parkland, and I'll point to a, to a uh, windmill, a, a weather vane, that is still there, that, that you will see in the photos tomorrow, which was a part of, of the science program, weather. We actually provided, I understand, the, the, the weather uh, ideas for the San Diego Union in, in, in those days. So you'll see that, but I'd like you to kind of, you'll know where it is. You know, but and also, while I'm, while I'm there, I'll also point out the ravine that you're going to see today didn't look then at all like it does now. It was, it was barren for the most part, it had a road that went down the side. Well, Albert Spaulding was a golfer. In fact, he helped start the San Diego Country Club and, and so forth right here in Point Loma before it moved. And, and so he had a green put in at the bottom of, of this ravine, which you could look at it today, you would never believe that. And I have photographs of both he and his wife in this parking lot hitting the ball <laughs> down down to that green with caddies no less you know and then others of them putting on on the green down at the bottom and, and so uh, it will require an, an amazing transformation of what you see and, and it is to see those two things together but i'll at least show you where that is so tomorrow you have a feeling for it okay Yeah, public safety. Okay, uh, how many of you brought your golf clubs? This, this, this is the spot right here, and the and the the green was was down in the down in the valley there. Hard to believe. Yeah, you you and. None of that greenery is there. It's, it's almost totally barren at, 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 at that point. And uh, it's just said a road was going down the, the, the other side there. And if you look, I think we may have to even slightly get on the property here. It is. It, it, I have no idea how it was able to. You can see this metal pipe going up and and if you want to go see, see at the top it is a weather vane you know at, at the top and you'll see photos of that very thing tomorrow with the professor and the students and so forth okay. so feel free to either look from here or go there it's that's public property that's part of the park This is a weather vane. Uh, this is where they pre predicted the, the weather. And there was a little house, and in fact, you can still see some of the concrete and so forth that was, that's alongside it. Was measured here the, the rain, the temperature. Yeah, I think also I don't know for sure, but they had a, also a, some seismological, I think, uh, ability here. I think so. And it, they had a wind. They measured the wind, speed, and temperature, high, low. It's in the in every issue of the Theosophical Path. You can read it. You know, in the back there. And if they had the figures, how uh, said they it to San Diego? Was some some per, person going uh, uh, walking on a horse, or was it then by telephone in that time? Uh, so as soon as they, as soon as they had telephone, it would have been that way. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. I'm sure it was at least telegraph. Okay. Yes, there would have been telegraph. There was a telegraph, oh, a telegraph uh, okay. site at Point Loma because Tingley oh, was always sending okay. telegrams. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they okay. just wired it in. Yeah. Oh, they had the uh, telegraph yes. for their own. Yeah, I'm, I don't yes. remember exactly where it was on, on here, but they had their own. They had an actual telegraph site here, because she was sending them all the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. That is original. Original? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Have there been earthquakes here? 
Yeah, yeah sure. sure. We sure. Always, always lots of earthquakes in San Diego. Okay, yeah. it's just always keeping on there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it is kind of it's kind of interesting in a way, you know, that that we use this in the logo, which is you know Greek and and theosophical in its origin, you know, is representing the essence, the mission, the purpose, you know, of the university, which is Christian education. I mean, it is. We have a spiritual and Christian thing, just like KT had, had as well, and which everyone I've talked to still appreciates that, that we're trying to accomplish many of those same things. You know, but we also have a profound respect, and our reason for existence is to, to spread knowledge in science and philosophy and, and everything else as best we can. And you know, we're going back to the Greeks and, and so forth. And so it, it, but it's hard to get anything that, that puts both of those images together. <laughs> and but but this one seemed to, to mark you know. Yeah. But the students the one that, that are here, do they, do they uh, get lectures about theosophy? Is it part of the... Well, or some... Well, actually, this is one of my fears, in a way, is, is that, you know, for 35 years, I've kind of been the person that was talking and leading, and, and uh, Emmett Small and I, for several years, about every two years, we had chapel like three times a week when everyone, virtually everyone, came, about 1,800 students. Okay. And, and I would show the, the, the slides, and he and I would talk about the theosophical roots, and so, so the students would have a sense of understanding where they were. Okay. With changes of presidents and changes of yeah, things, it's, it's very hard to keep some of those traditions as, as strong, and, and so that kind of fell by the wayside. We did, we did put in some photographs that are really nice, which you might be able to see up in the student union, which, and, and, and from time to time, there is an emphasis on that. And the students and others will call me all the time and ask me all these wild and crazy questions, you know, about things that students talk about, you know, were there, in fact, you know, uh, uh, tunnels underneath, and, you know, was Catherine Tingley, was was the, was a Spalding house, you know, made in the shape of a turtle, and you know, did 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 she think that her her dog was, you know, she's gonna be reincarnated in, into her dog, and I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it doesn't matter how many times I, I I say no, 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 you know, the next generation of students it just keeps going, it's got a life of its own. Well, there was so, an earlier one where she, someone saw her. I mean, recently, riding through the property on a white horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the you know, you know, Ken Kramer's about San Diego. Yeah. I saw just a week or two ago, and, and he was talking about the internet. He was showing pictures of the international headquarters building, which I hadn't seen that before. Oh. But but he included in what he had to say to just talk about her being reincarnated and in, 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 in her dog. And I said, come on, you know, Ken, I, he does, he really does a nice, he had interviewed the earlier me before. Rumor, the earlier version of that is people accused her of thinking that the dog was the reincarnation of Mr. Judge. Oh. <laughs> really, it's true. It's, it's, very it's probably a more, a more believable <laughs> version. <laughs> but, but, you know, people who don't know anything about theosophy and they, they, they see the buildings and so forth, I mean, in the very early days, uh, they, there was, um, you know, question. I mean, and, and you know, there, she was accused of, you know, like having uh, uh, sexual orgies or whatever. The women would, at nighttime, would be flying around in their night clothes and stuff like that. And, and so, so it was in the L.A. Times. So she sued uh, the L.A. Times, you know, and that pretty much put a stop to that when, when. When, when that, that was there. Yeah, cause, especially because at that time, the, the owner, uh, Harrison Gray Otis, was one of the most powerful yeah. people in, San, in California, yeah. and no one yeah. ever yeah. had ever yeah. sued, done that yeah. ever to him. And well, I mean, it's it, sort of like if you sued Rupert Murdoch today yeah. and well, won. That's yeah. true. And, and, <laughs> and, and, the, and the critical question was yeah. she was able to get the venue changed from L.A. to San Diego. And, and there's never there's always an enmity between these these, these two cities, yeah. and so but getting getting the trial here, you know, I think helped helped her a lot. And I, you know, when we're talking about these things, uh, if I repeat a story, you know, you, you should just look over it. But 
you know, Catherine Tingley didn't always get on well with some other theosophical leaders. And when um, um, head of Ad Adyar, Annie Besant. yeah, when Annie Besant came here about 1903, 1902, 1903, um, she was going to stay in Hotel Del Coronado over there. And so Catherine Tingley told the Hotel Del Coronado that if you allow her to stay there, I will never permit your, your guests to come on our property again. Well, she didn't stay there. Annie Besant then went into town and gave, and gave lectures at a, at, a, at a hall, which really upset KT a lot, right here in her own place. And, and as soon as Annie Besant left, Catherine Tingley bought the, the theater, <laughs> which became the Isis Theater down, down, downtown. And, and so, you know, if she, if she thought it was important to, 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 to make, you know, to say, I, I can do what I, can, what I need or want to do, you know, she had the power, she had the resources, uh, evidently, you know, to pretty much make it happen. So she wasn't someone to cross. Uh, is that story okay? I, mean, I think that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we've got people here from Point Loma and Adyar in, in different places, and, and I know your father was committed as his, you know, little little thing, you know, the eclectic theosophist, you right, know, and, right. and I have, you know, we oh, had a conference okay. here of everyone about 20 years ago, and, you know, and I've, I've just like the ecumenical movement within, you know, the Christian religion, you know, is, is hopeful, at least for some of us, uh, you know, I, I know that it was... Emmett's dream, you know, that there would be more comedy, shall we say. Yes. But however, um, we, we, we have comedy, but we don't, there, there's no need to revise history. Ah. Am I revising it? No, yet? no. Oh. We, these stories are illustrative of yeah. how it was. It's well, it's good. just as an historian, you, you, yeah. you try to tell the facts, you know, the way they were, and, and sometimes it, it, it makes some people look better or worse or, you know, some, some something. And so my job as a historian, as least as I know, is to try to tell you the way it really was. But, uh, okay, well, let's see. Uh, next, I think we will we will go to the international headquarters building. Okay, which is we're gonna you can follow me. Up, up in One of the things this is the student union building. Everyone eats in there in the dining room. This is kind of a formal reception area. You can maybe see on the, on the walls over here, these pictures are, are normally here. They must, they must be doing something to them, I'm not sure. But you can see this is the, I'll, I'll take up several just to kind of show you, give you a glimpse of what you're going to see tomorrow. So that is the Spalding House just after it was built. You can see the sphere, La Jolla in the background. PB in La Jolla. Uh, Ocean Beach isn't there yet. One of the things unusual is, is that you can see here that there was actually an entrance on this south side uh, into that conference room where some of you were, where there's a window there now. Well, there was not only a door there and a door here, but there was a door here. And then it doesn't stay there long. I told you things changed all the time. And then they, they take that away and, and put, a, put a window in there. Um, so, I would guess that this is about 1902, 1903, a couple of years after, after it was built. If you were walking along Catalina Avenue back in those early days, this is what the campus looked like. This is the Roman Gate right here. This is Loma Land Avenue. This is a Spalding House, so we know it's after, 2000, after 1901. This is the Homestead or Academy building. It's went by both names. Huge. It's where the church thing is. We're going to walk back by there, maybe peek in there on our way back. But, but this is after it has been renovated. It was a hotel there originally. KT didn't like the architecture. And so she added a story to it, put domes over the top and everything, and, and made, made the huge academy building. You can't see it, but on the other side is, is the Temple of Peace. I think we may have that somewhere else. Then out here are the Lotus Homes. Actually, this would be the property between here and where the library was up there that you could see. 
there were, I think, 10 of those Lotus homes. And we have one of them left, which, which I, I think I'll be able to show you at least part of it. And so that's where the children lived. Then after a while, girls at this time tended to live in the academy building and the boys in, in, in the Lotus homes themselves. In 1911, uh, they did build, a benefactor came and built Juvenile Hall, which was a, a building that kind of goes right in there. And that became the, the place where the, where the young women lived after that. So, so the academy building. It was originally a hotel, and you'll see, you'll, you'll be amazed at the picture. I'll show you tomorrow. Well, just to, some of you may recognize where you just were. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The alumni house. Yeah. And uh, this, one, this one doesn't show Blavatsky. It doesn't show this. It's just a staircase this one, but I'll show you the rest of it. Probably the most classic of all the photos is, is this one, which more of the buildings, including the one that we're about to go to, which is, I think, upside down, yes, right here. That, that is the International Headquarters building. That's where Catherine Tingley lived most of her life. Still, <laughs> it, still prior to the building of the Greek theater, though. Uh, you can see that the amphitheater's there, but the, the, the actual Greek theater is not up yet. Is that right? Maybe. Or do we just cut kind of, well, it off camera? I actually don't think this was, was built until about 1905. This, this, this is, I think, earlier. Yeah. And the, the, the Stoa Doa doesn't go in until about 1910, I think. Right. And... and but, but this is, and if you notice, this is a square building here. Over the years, Catherine Tingley added to this side, added to the back, and added to the other side, on three sides. Uh, when we built the adjoining building uh, over here, that's where this building sat, right, right next door. Well, it, as you can see, it's right in the center of, of activities and so forth. And so what we did was lift it up and move it across the street and turn it 180 degrees and set it back down on a new foundation. And then, and that's what we'll walk into that next. And, and the, the, the three additions were taken off back to what it, it was originally because some of those additions, we just really couldn't move it. And, but structurally, we could move the core. And, and so it, it is over there, and you'll get to see that. It's, it, it's lovely. Uh, this is Pepper Tree Lane. It was on the other side. We may walk back down there. There are two or three of the original pepper trees, but we, what, whenever we widened the road and all that, we put pepper trees, you know, back, back in there to, to, to keep that kind of idea going. This was the uh, Greek Gate. This is a uh, uh, DuPont Street that is heading off in this direction. People would come in Loma Land, where you did, come down either this way or on, as, as we just walked, and then, and then leave the campus out, out this side. When we came here, the city said, no, we don't want you doing that, too much traffic in the neighborhood. And so they closed that street off, and so we have to come in and out. And our security likes the idea it comes in and out the same place as well. But this, this gate is sometimes here, sometimes it's down here. I think I've seen it another place or two. Uh, there's an, there was an Egyptian gate, at the, at the, at the, which you'll see tomorrow, which is at the bottom of DuPont. And then the Roman gate was at the foot of Loma Land, where, where, where you were. So, and so the these, Egyptian gate. I said the Egyptian gate was at the foot of Dupont. Right, yeah. And this is a Greek gate here, but this is a smaller oh. one and, and movable. Oh, okay. The, the portable gate. <laughs> well, it seemed to be. Uh, oh, yeah, this is, since you've been there, I couldn't really explain to you very well, could I? But... This is the inside of the Spalding House, as it was originally. So, so you, you, you came in, and, you, and you, we are looking through the area that was closed off. This, that, that's the conference room in the back, remember? And so this is on one side of, of this. There was another one of these on the other side. And you can see the rugs, and there was a, like a really fancy European chair where you can sit on both sides of it or something, you know, kind of in the middle. Uh, but but that's 
that's the way it looked, you know, when the Spaldings were there. And I'll have a little better things for you to, to see tomorrow. You can see the wood is, is much darker. We're going to see this this building, which doesn't look much like this anymore, but there was a building that used to be down here where the library is, right, uh, right there in, in that direction. They were always moving things, so they moved that whole building, the Theosophist did, down to where it is presently. Uh, it was the mail room and other administrative functions up, up there. When we have it, we decided we would like to keep that building. It would have been cheaper to have just destroyed it and replaced it. <laughs> but but we, we particularly, the architect and I, frankly, and you may see these arches that are, that are here. And we just fell in love with those arches. And so we said, you know, let's, the building had to be redone to be functional, but let's keep the building in terms of the, where the windows are and where all these other things are, you know, as much as can and save as many of those architectural features, you know, as, as we possibly can. And so you will see that. It looks wider in, in, this, in this photograph, uh, uh, but, you know, we will, we will peek our head and you can see where those arches are in, in, uh, in, in a moment. Well, I guess that's enough of a preview for, for tomorrow. Well, one last. Just to kind of help you to get a sense of... Now, this is looking, I don't know, to the, to the southwest. This is North House, where we were. This is the Spalding Building. This was the Academy or, or Homestead Building. And the Temple of Peace is, is back on, on the other, other side, as you can see back through here. Excuse me, this, this is the Temple of Peace here, and this is the Spalding here. So these are the two buildings that, you know, this one burned in 1953, which was a terrible, devastating thing to people in this community. They just, just really hated to see that, and you'll see tomorrow why it was so beautiful. <laughs> and the steps that were led to it were still here when I came in 73. It, but... but and then this building was torn down by USIU in about 63. Uh, it was about, it was leaking a lot from all of the things, and they just decided that for their own reasons that they didn't want it there in that place anymore. So it, this was torn down and this one burned. So this is the, the third of that triumvirate, kind of the only one that, that really continues to be there. This one was kind of an aquamarine, the glass. Uh, this one is amethyst. The, the, the Temple of Peace was amethyst. And, and then the Spalding House was, was amethyst as well. So, and, but you can see how barren all, all of this is. I'll show you pictures where there are fruit trees and there's a cowboy out there and cows and things, things like that, you know, in, in that particular neighborhood. One thing I, I've always wanted, again, we've never gotten, you can see this little overlook up on the, on the edge. I've always felt like that we really ought, you know, have three or four of those, you know, along the edges you know, overlooking Toward, toward the ocean, but never been able to get that, that done. Any questions? But this, this is at least a small effort to keep you know, the, the theosophical past and the, the, you know, the history of this campus kind of before the students' attention. And, 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 uh, and, and they do have occasions to kind of focus on it from time to time. Okay, now we're going to the International Headquarters building. Just come on in and there's some openings here on either side or retired, you can sit on the steps for a moment. This, uh, this was the International Headquarters building. Um, and you can see the first floor is public, kind of, and fairly ornate. So when various theosophical groups would come, the cabinet, others, this is where Catherine Tingley would, would entertain them and they would have conferences and discussions and, and all those things. There was a, a, uh, a fireplace back over in, 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 in that side that we lost in the move. There was also a fireplace upstairs that we lost in, in the move. It's very hard to move masonry the way, the way that we did. 
But other than that, this is pretty close, except this, under, under Cal Western, this was kind of like a fraternity house. Uh, the upstairs of this building uh, was, was condemned for, for 20 years. When I was on faculty, when you would walk into this building, it was all dark. There were, you can see these pipes that, that are there and here. They, they all came down into these areas and so forth. There were just some fluorescent lights stuck up there. And there was a great big piece of wood so forth here that blocked access to this area off totally. You'd have to walk around through this little area to get around to the back, to one of the additions that was on, on, on the back side. So, I mean, this, we only, and so upstairs, it was actually used for storage for mattresses and stuff for, for, for a very, very long time. And uh, then, you know, as the years go, you're able to do, to do more and more. And so, when, actually, when we moved it, there was some work done before, but mostly when it was moved, we began to, to, to put all these things back. And let's see, is, yeah, this door is open. Yeah. If you think about historical restoration a little bit, if you can, the ceilings in here were all rusted out and, and missing in certain places and so forth. And to give you a sense, that, that whole wall had been destroyed because there was an addition on the other side of it. And so with the help of some historical uh, 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 preservationists and so forth, we, what we did is all of this is all brand new. Mm. And, and, and he took samples of the original and made molds. Wow. So, so this is plastic wow. and where that's tin. Mm. And we did all the, egg and, all the egg and dart and everything else had to be done you know, the same way. And then the window was the original window that was out on the other side, so we brought this window back in the way it was originally, and you know, made made the room you know the, the the way the way that it was originally, and then all of that kind of repair and, and fixing up and and it was painted differently. We I mean in, in in those days this was really quite dark, but we consulted people and and so forth, and they suggested. That, that these colors and, and these variations to bring out various architectural elements and so forth. And we hid everything, you know, as, as much as we possibly could and also got light in to, for, for students and so forth. And then the lights out there, we also got a consultant there because those lights are all different and so a historical consultant and so he, he used his imagination as to what he thought the lights might be, have been like. And so we put the, especially the center one that you, that you see there, and I think there's maybe one on each end, but it's particularly the center one. And then six months after all that, I found a photo, and it was almost exactly wow. the, same, the same one. So he had kind of much been, been, been right on. Um, this is a communications building uh, uh, for, for that particular major, and these are classrooms that you see, and so there's a lot of student use up and down. Uh, from here, I'm going to, to let you kind of, you can go up the steps now, and you'll notice that there's a skylight that now is opened up and brings light in, in, into the building. As you go up, you will see around the steps also the carvings. Those are copies of the original Reginald Machel. Uh, a third of them were there, the rest weren't, so, so we made them consistent and, and put them all back in around there the way it was. A lot of, a lot of activity, a lot of her cabinet meetings, interacting with people, visiting. But it's been probably 20 years since I've been in Because I know. Well, if you if you notice, this is board and bat architecture. This this is original on this side. That is been been put back. I mean, to to match. This was originally like right, a little thing to walk through. It was like right here, and there were pipes and everything going down through here. So that's all been cleaned out. The globes brought back. Uh, we had to have an elevator, handicap. So we added this, you know, from, from here out was added, which includes the, uh, the elevator over here and, and which, you know, city upgrade and so forth. Again, pipes were truncated to get them more out of out of view. This is this is the more plain thing upstairs in Victorian buildings, and, and so. But uh, we were able to to shore it up and to fix it up and to you know use it. And so, 
you know, it, 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 it's really one of the largest majors and a lot of, a lot of students. The room, you can look in there. Now remember that you are reversed 180 degrees. Uh, Catherine Tingley originally, let's see if I can keep it straight. Uh, uh, that side is, is, would, have, would have been looking over the bay. This side would have, would have, where Catherine Tingley actually had her living quarters was in an addition here mostly. And it overlooked the ocean. And in those days, so she could overlook the ocean from here or go into that meeting thing on that side and, 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 and look to the, to the city. I, mm -hmm. I believe that I've got it correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there were a lot of meetings in there. As I say, there was. We, we did lose a, a fireplace in it. But it was also the board and bat and everything was put back in, in, into there. Um, I think that I assume that that door is, is locked right there in, into the office. Yes, if you want to try it. I think it's, yeah. Well, if you look over into the corner there, I always look like, you see those little drawers? If you, if you pull out those drawers, you know how you have these little gum label things, you know, usually red around the edges and, and so forth? If you pull one of those out, it says, white kid gloves. And the other one, the next one down says, black kid gloves, you know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, she, she was traveling in pretty high company, and, and, and those two drawers still have the original little messages, you know, in them as to what were in those particular drawers. Dwayne, are these, these are not original, are they? Uh, I, I explained I so. that they, they are copies of the, their, this, this, this was uh, as I condemned up here, yeah. and so what we did was we took what well, we tried tried to, to to maintain the original. I don't think ultimately we did because it was the colors and everything was fighting. So ultimately, but these are tracings of the original Machel things into this wood and then put back in, into the framework right, that, that right. they had. Yeah. So what colors would they would they have had? Uh, the, these, this is mostly pretty dark. I mean, you know, it, 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 most of these, these were buildings. Painted, this, the Temple of Peace was uh, painted with different colors. Yeah, you'll see that. You'll house see. Was not. Yeah. No. Except there were some uh, in the doors, which had glass in them downstairs. There were some lotus images that were in color. I remember. Hmm. Well, if you notice in the, I think the picture probably of, of the administration of, of Miras Hall, the, the, the Spalding House, you, you notice how that, that had a, a dark, you know, the wood was all dark and everything. I, I think that you would have found, and in fact, I have, I could have showed you a couple of pictures of, I think, are the inside of this house that is also where the wood is dark. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know precisely the color that was on, on the, uh, the lead part. This, this stuff, incidentally, in, you know, in uh, 1904, 1905, you could order all of these pieces out of like Sears and Roebuck catalogs and, and so forth. And, and so this egg and dart, these are all standard pieces that you would bring in and then and then they would tack, tack them all in and then cut, you know, to, to, to fit, you know, in, in places. And so they would just, kind of like wallpaper today, but, yeah. you know, they, they so it, it wasn't something totally unique. Right. You see it a lot of time in old, old hardwood stores, you know, yeah. hardware stores and stuff, you know, on the ceilings and so forth. Well, it's, it's the same kind of stuff that, that, that they, they, they've used here. And do you know Marshall did it all alone, the wood? Mitchell didn't care about it. Has he in a group of students? He, he, he was, was always, always teaching, teaching the students woodworking, and also there's pictures where you see him even, they even made instruments. Yeah. They were making violins and all kinds of things. He had that kind of uh, level of expertise. So, but I know a lot of it he did himself. Uh, even like, I think the, in, I don't, again, I'm not quite sure how, but the entire painting of the interior of the Temple of Peace, he did himself. You will you will see the inside of the Temple of Peace and the beauty that, that he's talking yeah. about. It, it's black and white, you know. But it, um, I understand, you know, that, that that it was all in light pastels of right. various colors and colors. must have been gorgeous. Must must have been gorgeous. Okay. Next, we're going to drop by the um, uh, Greek Theater.
and then to Culbertson, uh, with, well, which is that building I was telling you with wait, the, wait, the model. Okay. This was the work room of the conference room of KP? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, she had a lot of the cabinet meetings. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. Emmett told me that he yes. would meet. He was his secretary sometimes, yeah, yeah. And, and they would meet. And the, uh, the, this is where the uh, uh, fireplace was, okay. right, right, right in here. Yeah. And in the, of this, instead of looking over the ocean, was looking over the city. Yes. Yeah. And there was a lot, a lot of reworking, you know, that had to be done to to bring this back. A lot of half of the bed, board, and bat and stuff has all been redone in, in here as well. Hey, Ken. Ken, I forgot. We're going to look at the Lotus House next. So if you can get the. Folks, back over this way. I didn't sign anything, though, but I need to. And it's like very cool. I did, it's in retro. Okay, I think now virtually everyone is here. Uh, this is the last uh, remaining of, of the Lotus Houses. Uh, these were some of the earliest structures, and they did go through a, a metamorphosis from the very, the very early ones. You'll see tomorrow I had like tents on the top. Some of them are, are circular. Some of them are square. Uh, this was number 10. There were, there were 10 of these, and they were kind of uh, in, right in the middle of the campus where, where the library, where the uh, 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 student services building was, You'll see it. You'll see that tomorrow there were walkways in between them and so forth, but that's that's where the children lived. And normally the, the children would uh, only see their parents on Sunday afternoons, uh, and the rest of the time they they lived in a Lotus House like this. And there was a tutor, and you can see on the edges that there are rooms uh, uh, for you know I, I think probably two in, in in each in each one, and and all all along the the, the outside. This area is for, for lessons. Uh, they ate in common. Uh, there was a fireplace that you can see over in this corner uh, where, where, where it was. And so they would uh, have lessons and uh, other things and lived in, in, this, in this particular kind of, of, of arrangement. Um, this was the only one left when we bought it in, in 73. And um, it, it, it was right behind a, a small building that was the home of um, Nierensheimer, the diamond merchant from New York. And, and uh, so they were right close. And that home also had to go to widen the street out here and, and, for, and to build a building. But we, we were able to save this. And so we moved it from over where it was, you know, over here, so it would stay in some kind of proximity to, to this other building. So uh, it, uh, it's used for conference services now to people who wanted to come on, on the campus, and, which we tried to arrange for here. But August the 1st, after August the 1st, because of school coming, they, they don't accept any conferences or anything after August the 1st. So we were out of, out of unable to do that. May I ask, uh, did the members build these houses themselves or partly? Or do you know that? Yeah. Skin here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they did themselves. I would assume so. Now there, I have looked at uh, for the larger buildings. Uh, there are plans and so forth down in the California room at at, this, at the uh, city library, and and some other things also the San Diego Historical Society and and so forth. So they did have some professional engineers and some plans and so forth. But I think that there was an awfully lot of input of, of, from KT on a lot of those things. Then, then the, 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 there were a lot of craftsmen here, mostly European, but many, many craftsmen. And, and I think when she could say, this is what I want done, but maybe they had to interface both with the city and maybe some local people you know, for, for the drawings and, and so forth. So we, we do have some of that stuff remaining. Uh, there are also a lot of campus maps and plans and so forth which will drive you crazy I mean, because you, 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 can, it, it, you can't always tell the year and the, everything moves and uh, it's, it's, it's really, really tough. But, um, but I, I do think that they did use a lot of the, the help that was, was, was here. I don't think they went outside except where they, they really needed to.
Most and just, of these houses were octagons, you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, so, well, some are circular, some are square, and there some are, are actually octagon yeah. as, as well. So they're they're not. They're, you'll see them tomorrow. They're they're not all all, all the same. And I think some are smaller. Uh, at least the one that I, I'll be showing where the children are. It's circular, and it it, it looks not much larger than just this this area, but. It's gone, and so all we can kind of do is just guesstimate. And, and what it was. So how many kids would be in here at the time? Well, the rooms, let's see, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rooms. So there would be about 14 boys probably in, one yeah. of, in here. And probably one of these was for the tutor. So maybe 12 and plus the tutor. I think there, there, I think there was a restroom in, in, in the, there's, there, when this one actually when we got it, it, there was a little kitchen in the back, which wasn't there originally, and so I think they converted that. But whether or not the, the restroom, I don't think that there were central restroom facilities. At least I, I'm, I'm unaware of it. So I assume that they were there were probably you know cess pools or whatever you know they some kind of arrangements. You know I think here. Uh, with, with with each far so far as I know, water was always a difficult issue uh, and for for this for this place. They didn't have wells. They did, and they and but uh, the the water, which I think they used a good bit for irrigation and so forth, was but it was pretty brackish and everything to 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 uh, to drink, and because there's underneath here there are mines and things like that under Point Loma. There have been mines out here and so forth, so I think the water is, is, is pretty bad. I have pictures that you'll see tomorrow down off of Catalina where there are windmills. Uh, and finally, I think it wasn't really solved until they were able to pump water from the city and so forth up the hill you know, to here. I think that that was the final kind of solution. But it's pretty amazing that they were able to take care of all of the plants and everything else you know, with, with what, what they had. So, and I don't know for sure how they did that. I think the tutor himself slept here too. He was 24 yes. hours, I think, with him. That's my understanding. That, that they, they actually lived here. And, 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 and during the day, as I understand it, you know, they would get up early and, and all go to eat together, which you will see tomorrow in the refectory. They would have lessons kind of in the, in the morning to about noontime. And then in the afternoon, it was kind of learning by doing. Uh, for the different kinds of art projects and crafts and and botany and you know, all, all kinds of uh, things like that. Um, it's it's uh, uh, mostly they all dressed alike. Um, the stories are that you generally, I mean, I try to tell you little tidbits here and there, but but KT would would often take. Uh, two to three young women with her when she'd go to Europe, particularly in the teens and 20s. And so she would school them, have them schooled in manners and all the forks and all the dress and everything. And so here they were expected to dress you know, quite plainly, but whenever she was taking them to, to very exquisite places in, in Europe and so forth, she expected them to dress and to, to comport themselves into that style. And so they would be trained that way, go there, you know, how are you going to get them back on the farm after they've seen Paris, you know, I mean, and so I understand that often the reintroduction of some of those young women back into this was quite difficult. And and uh, so, so I mean, um, some people thrive, some of these children thrived in this environment. I mean, it was... This is, the, I'll say tomorrow, the time of Montessori and Frobel and kindergarten movements and, and all those kinds of things. And some of them really took to it, but some of them really didn't and couldn't wait to leave. Some of the Cuban kids really liked it here. Some of them were, were constant behavioral problems and weren't happy till they finally left. So, I mean, it's, it's like life. You know? it's, 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 not, it's not everything idyllic. And a lot of the photographs that you see are really kind of made for publication and so probably present you know, the better face of, 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 of most things. But, uh, but, you know, I think that's just the way, the way it was. Mm -hmm. Catherine Tingley was gone a lot. 
Nobody ever really knew where most of the money came from to, to operate all of this. Still don't today, I don't think. Uh, and uh, there's a controversial part in, in the history of, of, of the place where uh, the, uh, the historian, what's his name? Greenwald. Greenwald, Emmett Greenwald. You know, he, he says that, that, the, that the society kind of went into decline in the late 20s and with KT's death and then the onset of the Depression. But he faults KT for kind of closing the, a lot of the lodges in other parts of the country and concentrating all of the resources here. And so then when the Depression hit and so forth, then they couldn't really maintain and sustain this one. And he thought if they had kept those alive, that, that, that maybe they could have then provided resources to maintain this. Actually, uh, you know, I was reading more recently, and the, the real loss of income actually came in the late 30s, mm -hmm. which really made the, it really the core loss was because more than half the income during the 30s came from Europe, mm -hmm. and that all ended by 1937 as the war approached, and that was the actual push over at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very good insight that, that I yeah. hadn't really, you know, again, the, where the money you know, really all, all came from isn't known, but by the 1930s, the city was trying to tax them fairly heavily where they hadn't before, and, the, and they began to sell off more and more land. That uh, uh, subdivision over there that somebody said you know, they saw Tingley Drive or whatever, yeah. that was a dairy, and my understanding is, is that the, the society owed the dairy money and, and to, to settle the bill, they gave them the land. So and they, those, were, those were just really hard times. And, and uh, so GDP had a very, the, the, this place changed a lot uh, in, in the 1930s trying to survive and without the, the charisma in some ways and connections. And when, when KT died, my understanding is, I mean, some people were, were you know, really heartbroken and, and you know, stay, were going to stick it out to the last or whatever. Some of them finally said, ah, you know, it, it, now, now I can go about my life. And so I think that there was some talent and some people who found that that an appropriate time for them you know, to, to, to leave the society. And so you had a number of these difficult situations that kind of come one after the other you know, right, right through that time period. And there's no doubt that the you know, GDP, well, they, they, they began to, to have more students from, from in town and, and relax the, the dress rules and, you know, a number of other kinds of things to kind of move into, you know, mainstream or, you know, to try to bring in resources and, and, and everything. So it's, it's you, you have to know kind of what decade you're talking about to, to, to be able to apply your understanding to it properly. Okay, well, let's go to the Greek theater now. Okay. The oldest in the United States. Yeah, it's safe. We Well, you can uh, you can see this. There's there is a over there uh, a, a plaque that, that denotes this as the oldest Greek theater in the United States, yeah. 1901. Yes. Uh, it is almost exactly the way it was then. The floor is still the same. Uh, these benches are exactly the same. They have been rebuilt. You know, there have been talks about how they should do it differently, but at least I was always saying, no, you need to keep it, you know, the way, the way that it was. So the configuration and the, and the way that that is put in there is all the way it was. I have pictures, which I think you'll see tomorrow, of, of that floor being built, you know, of, of, of uh, events being held here. Yep. There, there was a building over on that corner, and there's another building a, l a little bit further before all this excavation it, took place. Was there was a building down below where they kept the flats and so forth and where people made changes. And so they, they would come from that building up and circle into the, into the area. There was a, a band leader that, that, would, that was up here, and then there was another, another building. I also have pictures where there were like 
and not trellises, but extensions of the building over on this side and on that side. So they did a number of kind of different things to it over, over a period of time. Um, some people from Los Angeles, I think I'm telling you everything I'm going to tell you tomorrow today, but you know, people would come down here on weekends and they would have like two presentations and so people would stay in town and so would come out for Shakespeare or, or, or something else and, and then take the railroad back to L.A. And, and so, you know, there, this would be, you know, I have pictures of it, you know, mostly full and everything. So, you, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But it, it, this, this, is, this is one of the most beautiful places. Now, uh, now, on commencement, we have three different commencements. And we have outgrown it over all these years. Now, at the beginning of, of May, they start building in risers that, that come from here. All the way come out here on, on the street like this. And then they, we fill this thing three times over. You know, with all of the graduates coming through and all their parents, and okay. in fact, still have to control the number of people that they come. But it, it, it's, you know, with with I don't know, the setting is just so idyllic that it's 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 Perfect. it's just incredibly beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with all the pageantry and all the colors and all the joy of the students and their parents and everyone else, it's uh, it's it's a high high occasion. What's so. the acoustics of it? I don't think that the acoustics are that terribly great, honestly. Uh, and, and lighting has always been an issue. And the fact is, is it's never been used as much as it, it, I think it really should. But you can feel like tonight, you know, even here in the middle of the summer, when that, when that breeze starts coming off the ocean, man, I can tell you, it can get cold as can be here. So they, they have had some movie nights and... They had a, like a Loma Palooza where they bring bands in and things like that. And you know, but but it, it's it's really uh, the the art thing, the, the theater and so forth. Is that mostly done in, in the other theaters and not outside? Okay. Uh, they do have ice cream socials. They have ch outdoor chapels here from from, from time to time. Uh, high schools, other places sometimes will arrange with the university to have their commencements here. Uh, so it, it and weddings sometimes are here. So it it's, it's a, it's a, has a variety of uses, but most of the time it's not, not utilized a, a, a whole lot. And again, the, the structure here as far as being oh. by the original? Or okay, uh, that, that wasn't built until about 1909, 1910. It was, so a lot of early pictures, it's just flat. And then in 1950, about 1954, 55, there was a big storm and, and knocked the, the, the original down. And so the, the, the university that preceded us rebuilt it. And, but honestly, they often didn't do things really, really well. And so uh, about 10, 15 years ago, it, it became necessary for us to go back in and redo it. Mo much of it has been totally redone. Uh, because it was rotting in various places and everything, it is it is the same as the original now. In fact, we, we put it back more the way it was original, except that the extension on this side it, it, it comes out further it, it, where where it is used. You know, for when graduates go across and yes. so forth, and so it extends a little bit more. But the but the number of steps and the height of the steps and and all those things are, were very carefully put back to the way it was. It is all of wood, eh? It's all wood. No, no. Proportions are the, same. the proportions are pre precisely the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you there's, a, like there's a debate about when? what the what the roof consisted of originally, and and it's not easy to tell, and and so basically you know they just put something good on it and tried to take it out of view. But some things you just yeah you have to use your best judgment. I do think that they used a kind of model from the, somewhere in Greece. And there, one of the original outfit theaters was a kind of model. I don't, I don't, you know, KT traveled all over the world, and so almost everything that's here, I think she was exposed to at some place. And except whenever she put it back together, it was never a copy of what, what she, she no, I mean, no. like, like on the spheres and so forth. I mean, when, when, I was, when I was working on those, 
I, I got art people. We got out the books of, you know, religions of the world, masterpieces, architecture. Nothing like that in, in anywhere. And in fact, the sphere itself, which we rebuilt, right on top of it, there's a circular thing like this, and then there's a, a pointed thing like that, which in all the pictures, we couldn't, we couldn't really tell what that was on the top. I mean, every photo we can get, we would magnify it and, you know, try, because we're trying to be just absolutely yeah, yeah. perfect for the, for the way it was. <clears throat> Finally, the best that we could tell is, is that it, it, it looks kind of like you know, a base and a candle. Maybe it's the light or something. We have, you know. So if you look at it, that, 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 is, that is what it is. About a year or two after that, I got another photograph which showed the top of it specifically. And really what's on the top of it is a lotus flower. Yes. Which makes sense, but it didn't occur to us, nor the Theosophist or anyone else. No one knew. But in a way, I'm, I think it, 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 our, our community was, has, was always supportive, has always been supportive in restoring the historical part. You know, but I think you know if you start getting into the to the kind of spiritual religious stuff, they could get a little more antsy you know, yeah, about, yeah, about yes. this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, in retrospect, in a way, I'm kind of glad I didn't know. Yeah, what it was. <laughs> because if, if it had been a lotus flower, I, yeah, I would have I been felt compelled yeah. to do it, and uh, and it might have caused it might have caused, caused more flack yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah, so I think yeah. we might have been lucky there, but. It, you you and I know what what it really yeah, was, but and it, and it was a sincere effort to put what we thought was there. But we have a picture from from the Lotus. You have a picture, a photograph of uh, from, from the original. Um, do you do you, you can do you discover that it was a Lotus? Um, I'm sure I have it in my oh, okay. photo slide somewhere, but I can't. <laughs> I, I would have to go. <laughs> no, 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 I'd have no, to go no. find it. Do they, do well, the, the the seats are mm -hmm. these pretty close to what they were originally. Yes, in fact, you, 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 I don't know if you if you saw the photo, but I will show you tomorrow when when those are being put in, and they they look exactly the same. But the same type of material. Basically. Well, uh, actually, there, there's dirt underneath, and and then ground squirrels and everything would go under, and they would rot and all that. And so there's been a, a, a number of you know, the, the the people down in the shop. They they have different different ideas at different type points in time as to what is the best material. Mm -hmm. You know, so long as it's wood and, and it looks the way it was before. But sometimes it, I know plywood has been used, other kind of wood. But the whole idea is at least the you know but the, it's wood yeah. where the seats were made. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think that they have they have put concrete in underneath mm -hmm. there where the where the thing and you know and then put put them. In, in a way that, that whenever they get wet and everything, they don't rot out so fast. Yeah. And the color, again, was white. Color's the same. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's the same color.
Well, you notice, you notice. Yes, and she, you have she as a photograph of this. Yeah. I mean, now we put we put the skylights in, you know, and you know we put this wall in, you know, to make offices so so that you know there are offices all the way around. You can see the, the how the, this was kept, you know, to be seen uh, yeah, okay. along along the edge on this side, and that one continues into an office. On, on, on the other side, so we we were able to to keep all of that. We wanted to keep it light in here as much as possible. So what was this originally? I showed you the picture. This is this was where the women were working on crafts and things like that that they sold in the women's mart, and and so uh, this was the primary building for for doing that. Now this building, whenever we got it. It, was, it had a ceiling, so you didn't see any of that. And there, the front was closed off. There was an old pipe organ in there. Um, I mean, it was it was just just terrible. I mean, but we could see from photographs, you know, what it was originally. So you can see that all of the windows on the, on the outside mm -hmm. are kept just exactly, you know, the way they were. They're new windows, but they're the same size nice. and everything, you know, as they were originally. And so we. And then, and then there's a downstairs section. Of the, this is half of a building that kind of leans over the side. So you know, we redid you know that that as well. But but we 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 tried to be as, as uh, sensitive to holding on to to the essence of, of of the building. But but for years we didn't even know that this stuff was up there, and and because or, or very little because it just went to right there. And then when we opened the ceiling, whoa, you know, look, look here. And, of course, it gives a lot more height. But if you, from the picture, if you could see, you know, it was taken from back, back that end, you know. But, but every one of these offices, you know, has ocean views and over, some of them Greek theater and ocean. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty marvelous setting. We're showing them the, the um, uh, elements here, the architectural elements. I can't open the other doors into an office. But this is, this is all this building, both upstairs and downstairs, is psychology. Any other questions? It's a fairly limited view in here, but it just kind of gives you a sense of what we've tried to do. And, and we're, going to con we're going to conclude in, in the history building. This is one I have. Uh, as an emeritus professor, that's one thing you can still get the key. And you see again how that you know we tried to bring in all the humanities and arts and the history here, you know, with classical yeah. elements and so yeah. forth. And it was really uh, the making of these. It took us three years to think through how we wanted to do this. I think you have done a marvelous job. And then you know, columns again. You you, you can see, yeah. and really you know the outside there is kind of like mirroring the Appian Way. Yeah. You know, we, this is called the Forum. And then you notice again that that, that that has the circular elements, you know, on the on the front out, outside, and that all of this is also, you know, that way as well. Do you know what, what kind of building it was during the This is a new building. New building. Uh, this is this this okay. is. I brought you here because I'm a historian, so this is yeah, where my yeah, office was. But it also has the most fantastic view. Uh, well, we are limited to 2,000 full-time equivalent students. Mm. That means about 2,400 bodies here because some are taking less yes, than a full yeah. load. Right. And I think around 1,600 of them live on campus. Wow. So, so the dormitories here, and then there's also a whole set of dormitories on, on mm. the other side of campus. Yeah. It'll come to me. We, we, the, it does go beyond that. Those are business buildings up in there, sociology. There's also a point right out there that in theosophical days was, was, was called uh, uh, Camp Karnak. 
it was a, it was a literary group, and, and that they had little cottages out there, and a lot of books and everything were written. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Karnak? Is it Karnak referring to Egypt or Karnak to France? I suspect. I, I, I suspect it was in Egypt, because I just traveled to Egypt about a, two years ago, and you know I've found a lot of names and and architectural pieces and stuff you know that were kind of from here. Take yourself out of the game. It's hard. It's really upset. This is it for the tour, I think, and we're going to walk back to, to the beginning. Maybe a few comments. Well, so far as I'm concerned, this, this is. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank we'll you. We'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you very much. And you'll get to see it exactly the way it was. So you know the yes. Marina Village Conference Center? Yeah, it's the one that's over by the ocean on that side, right? Pervera Basin. Pervera Basin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the anchor room. Anchor room. Okay. Thank you, Dexter. Is that where we are?